What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here. We're gonna talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. And I don't mean cholesterol, I mean multi-GPU support. This is something that I have always been a huge enthusiast of. If you guys have followed my channel for any length of time, you've noticed that most of my builds that I do that are for myself include multi-GPU. Even though it's a terrible scaler, it costs more money and it doesn't get nearly the utilization it used to in the past, it's something that I still truly am passionate about. What I want, kind of want to talk to you today is towards people who are considering multi-GPU support or multi-GPU setups, what you should think about and what you should stay away from. Because in 2019, it's easy to accidentally waste a crap ton of money. Miss. Aw, man, I wish there was a better way to play warships. <laughs> what are we gonna play on, a computer? I like boats! And apparently you haven't heard of World of Warships. And yeah, you play it on a computer. World of Warships is a free-to-play strategy game where you take command of some of the most iconic war vessels from World War I and World War II. Vessels like the HMS Hood, USS Missouri, or the ships that changed naval warfare forever, the Dreadnought class. Each ship is recreated using historical photos and 3D scans of the real vessel to ensure the most realistic detail possible. So real in fact, you will swear you are on the ship itself. But we all know that the war is one in the sky, so that's why World of Warships features a completely revamped carrier playstyle where you get to take control of squadrons of aircraft performing bombing and torpedo runs to devastate your enemy. In fact, new players can start devastating their enemies by using offer code PLAYLANGLEY2019 to receive a free starter pack featuring the USS Langley aircraft carrier, 300 doubloons, 1 million credits, and 3 days of premium time. Now get out there and start putting some shells down range, sailor. Yeah, this is so much fun! It's on my ship. You can start having fun too by downloading World of Warships by using the link in the description below. So what actually started this whole concept of this video was I was intending to do a dual 5700 XT system benchmarking to see kind of like, hey, you know, $400 graphics card. Let's see how this compares to an $800 graphics card when you put two together, which was always kind of um, the thing. It was, it, was, it was common to take like a 950 Ti or a 960 or something and SLI those and get pretty damn close to like the 980 performance type of error and did it with the 400 series cards, the 500. But what we noticed was that um, anything below the 70 series leading up to Pascal was pretty much dropped and, and nullified any SLI support whatsoever. And so when I realized the 5700 XT could be enabled with Crossfire mode, although AMD was kind of like, you know, it's not supported, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. And because we were able to enable it, I started doing some testing and realized there was absolutely zero activity happening on the second card. Um, even in titles like 3D Mark, which are synthetic and they are designed to scale nearly perfectly with multi, at least with two cards, um, we were seeing crashes. We weren't even getting 3D Mark to run. It would, it would start to load the test, I'd get a solid white screen, and then it would completely lock the system. Now, we are, and, and when it comes to AMD, you can still actually crossfire things like Vega 64 and Radeon 7 and all of that. It's something specifically with this launch with Navi that they've decided to basically have zero out of the box support for crossfire. And what makes that a little bit disappointing is because what we talked about with Pascal was with implicit and explicit SLI or multi GPU. Um, Windows 10 could have done something. You know, there, DirectX 12 is, it's got different modes of multi-GPU support and it could technically be supported at the OS level, it could be supported at the driver level, it could also be supported at the um, game rendering level. And I think what happened here, and I did a video about this a couple years ago, is when you got three cooks in the kitchen now handling multi-GPU support, um, it became a little convoluted where it wasn't just handled with the driver. And so I think a lot of people dropped it for that simple fact of there was no way to make it a perfect situation or even scale really well when you had too many things, too many cooks in the kitchen, like I said. But Nvidia does still at least support SLI on the series series or the 70 series cards and higher. So 2070, 2070 Super and up does support SLI. Obviously, these are all the Titan RTXs that we've been using in the Rip GN series recently. We've used 2080 Ti's, um, we've used 1080 Ti's. But what happened was, even though you do have up to four-way SLI still supported with the Pascal series cards, they dropped three and four-way entirely 
with the RTX series cards. So that's why if you go on 3D Mark and look at the Hall of Fame and you can see that like on Time Spy Extreme and Time Spy and even Firestrike, you'll, you'll see that the top scores are still four-way SLI configs running last gen hardware because the new hardware, although great, still isn't able to outperform LN2 cooled, massive modified overclock 1080 Ti's, even the Titan RTX cards. So it's an interesting time right now where although that support was taken away, it still exists. Now I'm here to tell you that SLI does still scale nearly perfectly with those synthetic benchmarks, things like Far Cry 5 and 3D Mark, Time Spy, um, Port Royale with uh, RTX based cards. But if you're looking for true gaming performance uh, increases, you're not gonna see it with modern titles, let's say 2017-ish and newer, because what sort of happened here was the need for SLI has changed. It was something that was kind of needed. Now, now SLI goes all the way back to like the TNT era, it's like way back in like the voodoo cards and stuff like that. But it's something that um, is just not necessarily, but it's not something that's really necessary today because what's happened is GPU performance has definitely caught up to the pixel count in monitors. 1080p was a super hard resolution to run about five years ago. You were talking uh, limited VRAM on the graphics cards, very limited core clocks and core speed. The architectures were huge and slow. I remember when we first crossed the gigahertz mark, the one gigahertz mark when it comes to GPUs, it was massive. It didn't take long for us to start passing two gigahertz with triple to quadruple the amount of CUDA cores that are in the cards, quadruple the amounts of RAM. So the hardware has definitely advanced to the point where you could run 1440p and even 4K with single cards getting 60 FPS. Just three years ago, when we still were dealing with the Titan X Maxwell in the 980 Ti era, we still needed two cards to run 60 FPS with settings around the me medium to low for 4K. So it's definitely one of those things that's not necessarily needed anymore for the resolutions that you're running. But now that we're seeing the introduction of 8K TVs and possibly panels, um, it's gonna, I think resolutions are about to jump ahead again, but I don't think we're gonna see multi-GPU support be how we get there. I think what we're gonna see is a GPU race coming from the manufacturers that's gonna push GPU technology forward even further. That's gonna allow us to get more horsepower out of single cards. Now part of the problem with SLI or even Crossfire um, or any multi-GPU support was the introduction of micro stuttering. And that's because there's different ways to achieve uh, multi-GPU support. You would have, you know, alternate frame rate or AFR where one card would handle every other frame. You would also have um, like a, almost like an interleaving where each card would handle a different portion of the frame simultaneously rendering the scene. So there were lots of different ways to achieve the end result and I think because of that when it comes to now the implicit and explicit through DX12, it's one of those things where, like I said, it's too convoluted and the developers are just not even trying anymore. In fact, when Battlefield 5 first came out, the first thing we tried was 2080 Ti SLI with RTX going to see if it scaled at all with RTX. And what we found was there was even a menu option in there that was grayed out um, for turning on things like RTX or DXR. And it warned you like, look, if you have multi-GPU, you cannot run, like you will get zero support whatsoever for turning on DXR. So you had to run DX11, and then you would get multi-GPU support in Battlefield 5. In fact, as recently as when I did my live playthrough on Twitch of my Resident Evil playthrough um, of the remake, the very first thing I looked at, because I had the two Titan RTX cards, both of these cards with their air cooler still on there, in my system and started playing uh, and checking for multi-GPU support. And not only did it not support it, something happened to where it actually reduced the, the main clock all the way down to its base clock when I was trying to run the game. And so the, the first clock, or the first GPU, or GPU zero, did not boost up to where it should have when SLI was enabled. As soon as I went into the NVIDIA control panel, disabled SLI, then we got the first card to boost all the way up to where even a 3440 by 1440 uh, 100 megahertz panel was getting like 100 FPS with a single card. 100 megahertz panel? 100, 100 hertz, there like, we go. Dang. That's a fast panel. 100 hertz panel at, uh, we well, don't need 100,000 frames per second? 100 million frames a second. Whatever it is. <laughs> but yeah, the, but the fact that the first card was gimped by the second card with SLI going, that's all about profile and driver profile and all that. We used NV Inspector to go in there and try and even brute force some stuff. Same thing with Battlefield 5. So we saw that there was even zero scaling whatsoever, although they've got this fancy NV link on top of the NVIDIA cards and PCI Express 4.0. In fact, 
the funny thing about PCI Express 4.0 when it comes to AMD is when we talked about um, the NVLink bridge that exists on NVIDIA, they basically said in their exact words were, we don't need a bridge, we've got PCIe 4.0, so we've got way more throughput through the PCI Express lanes to handle multi-GPU support than needing anything with fingers. And then the irony is they don't support it at all anyway. So one of the things that people tend to usually do is buy two mid-range cards, SLI or Crossfire them together and get and usually exceed the performance of the top tier card. And that's not the case here. Um, the 2060 Super, which is kind of like the equivalent to the 5700 XT in terms of pricing, neither one of those support multi-GPU anyway. So I guess the whole point of this video is multi-GPU for all intents and purposes, with the exception of bragging rights and synthetic benchmarks for like 3 Mark, is dead. Which is kind of a sad day for me and I think Phil should cue the sad piano music now because it's true, even on Skunk Works when I've got two 2080 Ti's and I'm playing my games, the second card does nothing. In fact, when I do live stream though, it's kind of nice because the encoder that's built in, the NVEC encoder from NVIDIA is really, really efficient and it's really good. It's got very good bitrate uh, control, it's got very good image quality and nearly zero hit to the system. At least when you have a second card handling it and you're gaming on the primary card. Um, yeah, so this is more of a PSA. If you're thinking about buying two cards, I wouldn't. I would just save that money, get the top tier card, something like a, a 2080. I would, I would love to recommend something in the top tier range for AMD, but we already know the Radeon 7 is definitely a flop compared to the 5700 XT, which is beating it in many benchmarks without even overclocking it. Um, if you're going for the top tier, I need to have the best of the best. You're gonna shop at like a, two, a 2080 or a 2080 Ti or a super card. And then you could SLI those together, but like I just said, if you're looking for practical performance, you're not gonna get it with SLI. Take that money, put it into a better motherboard, better CPU, more RAM. Just, you could upgrade the entire tier of nearly every component in your system by dropping the second graphics card if you're thinking about doing that. Um, but it's, but yeah, I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking me about multi-GPU and SLI, is it still worth it? And the answer is truly no. And it's something that I've held out until the bitter end on admitting that it is completely unnecessary and impractical. And here we are. Jay's two cents, which should be Jay's two graphics cards, admitting it's dead. <laughs>